reach for my hand I'll soar away into the dawn Oh, I wish I could stay Fire Emblem Three Houses is a little over a year old, and since it's one of the games that helped me begin my YouTube comeback, I wanted to come back and talk about it a little bit and talk a little bit more about the music of it. This game, in my opinion, definitely has some of the best music in the entire franchise, and that is really saying something because of the admiration that I have for Fire Emblem Awakening. It usually just outweighs every other opinion that I have. Each piece that plays as you instruct and guide your students to victory is so melodically enticing and even more interesting harmonically. But one of my favorite pieces from the entire game is actually the main theme of the game, The Edge of Dawn, by, oh god, I'm probably going to say these names wrong, uh, Rei Kondo and Masato Koda. I'm still going to analyze the song like I usually do, but we're going to analyze it with the help of an old friend, a very, very old friend. A lot of you might not have actually known this growing up, but your music teachers often prepare their lesson plans based on the teachings of a specific musical pedagogue, such as Carl Orff, or Shinichi Suzuki, or even Edwin Gordon. Each one had a unique approach to music education, but one of the most well-known, and the one that I had the most experience with in college, went by the name of Zoltan Kodai. My music professors and even a few teachers that I have gone and observed were very heavily inspired by him and based a lot of their methods and teachings around his. Zoltan Kodai was a Hungarian music educator born in 1882 and was motivated to make an impact on music education solely from hearing students singing so terribly out of tune, according to MusicalU.com. Kodai was very into using singing games in order to get children singing and moving, but when it came to actually singing songs, he preferred to sing in canons, where students sing the same short song, but come in at different times in order to create different harmonies. These songs are usually very short, usually only lasting a few measures long, and typically repeat numerous times in order to create a longer song. So, real quick, let's actually listen to the beginning first few measures of The Edge of Dawn in a canon style, so that you can get an idea of what a canon is supposed to sound like. These harmonies are going to be a bit spicier than something that Kodai would normally teach, but I still think that it sounds absolutely beautiful when put all together. Now, granted, I wouldn't teach this to little kids, but the colors that this song creates in canon form are just incredible. Kodai's main form of instruction was learning songs through movable dough. Now, when we learn a song in movable dough, whatever note is considered the tonic is considered dough. So, if we look at the main melody line, the beginning four notes are G flat, A flat, F, and then we go back to G flat. Since we're in the key of E flat minor, our solfege here would be Me, Fa, Re, Me. Since G flat is a minor third away, a flat is a perfect fourth away, and F is a major second away. However, we could also learn this song completely differently in what we would call fixed do, which means regardless of the key that we're in, C is always going to be considered do. So if we read the beginning of the melody in fixed do, we would read this as se, la, fa, se, since in this case, G is a diminished fifth away from C, le is a minor sixth, and Fa is a perfect fourth. The solfege syllables of a major scale are Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. So if a note is higher or lower than what is normally in the key, particularly this G flat and or A flat, depending on what you're reading this in, we would need to use a different vowel in order to show that we're singing a note with an accidental. Typically, if a note is flat, we would give it the E eh sound, except for Re, which would be pronounced as Ra. If a note is sharp, we would give it the E sound. 
But no matter what you decide to read this piece in, it's clear as day that we have ourselves a lot of lowered notes, resulting in us being in a much darker tonality, despite how oddly happy the song sounds to me. I don't know what you guys think. I think it sounds kind of major for it to be in a minor key. But I feel like 8-Bit Music Theory described it best when he used the term musical oxymoron to show that while the main theme of Persona 5 is in a minor key, it sounds shockingly major or happy. The same can be applied to this piece. It's mainly because we're starting off these phrases on G flat and ending a lot of the phrases on D flat, which is the dominant or fifth of G flat. However, D flat is also the leading tone or the seventh of E flat. So it sounds kind of weird to end off a phrase on the leading tone because it sounds like it wants to resolve up to do. Ending phrases on the leading tone don't sound as stable as ending on something such as the dominant. So we'd be inclined to believe from looking at the music that we're in the relative major, only for us to be brought back to reality at the end of the intro, resolving to the tonic of the relative minor, E flat. Kodai's methods also involved lots of hand signals while singing. Each solfege syllable involves a hand signal that corresponds with it. Do is a closed fist. Re is your hand going up at about a 45 degree angle. Mi has your hand be flat with your palm facing the floor. Fa is a thumbs down position with your fingers facing away from you. Sol is your palm facing you instead. La is your hand making a mountain-like shape at the top of your head. T is your pointer finger pointing upward, and high do is just do but above your head, with slight alterations for each related to their accidentals. Students learning by the Kodai method typically do these hand signals while singing excerpts. Rhythms were also taught with solfege as well. Each note is taught through different solfege syllables, with the quarter note being pronounced as ta, eighth notes as tt, 16th notes as tiri tiri, although I personally prefer to say tikka tikka because that's what I learned in college. Half notes are ta a, so on and so forth. So again, we're going to go back to the original melody. So notice how it's notated with two dotted quarter notes, a regular quarter note, and then a whole note. The way that we would read this little phrase is tum tum ta ta. According to the International Kodai Society, Music literacy refers to the ability to read and write musical notation and to read notation at sight without the aid of an instrument. And this could not be any truer. Music is most definitely a second language and people and schools should realize this more. Because students are learning to speak it by singing in solfege, speaking in rhythmic solfege and using hand signals, and they're learning to read and write music by identifying things such as notes and their durations, key signatures, chord qualities, and so much more. But something else that we can do with music literacy is actually learn a lot of history and character information from the lyrics of a piece. So let's take a look at the lyrics of The Edge of Dawn. Now, if you've played Fire Emblem Three Houses, then you'll know that Edelgard is the overall antagonist of the game, and this song is undeniably about her. But you can learn a lot about her overall character from the words that are sung in Edge of Dawn. One of the biggest parts of the game is Edelgard's relationship with Byleth, the main character. Whether you choose to teach her class or not, she is just completely enamored by you, and that's why you have the choice to go with her to the Adrestian Empire for her to claim the throne as Empress, if you join the Black Eagle class. If you choose any other route, you will inevitably have to fight her, but once you defeat and kill her, she faintly says, wanted to walk with you. Even after starting the war in Fodlin, her feelings for Byleth and her hope for him to join her cause still remain. It's tragic, but it's shown so wonderfully in the first verse of the song. Give it a listen and pay attention to the lyrics. Reach for my I 
think this is a really strong start to the song. Edelgard telling Byleth to reach out to her, regardless of the fact that she's destined to inherit the Adrestian Empire throne. When the words, I fear the edge of dawn, knowing time betrays, are sung, it shows that Edelgard's running out of time on a few things, actually. Firstly, to try and convince Byleth to join her cause, but also because of the fact that she herself has a shortened lifespan due to having two crests, which is why she strives to create a world where crests no longer exist. That way, people can't experience what her and Lysithia have gone through. Let's listen to the next few lines. As you progress through any of the four campaigns, you learn that Edelgard is also a character known as the Flame Emperor, secretly plotting with a group called the Agarthians to prepare for her hopeful success in the war. So when Yet Still I Hide Behind This Mask I Have Become is sung, it's subliminally symbolizing her identity as the Flame Emperor, but also really helps show the frailty that Edelgard suffers from in the latter half of the game. If you do choose to side with Edelgard, after the five-year gap, you learn that she begins to have a lot of doubts and suffers from a lot of insecurities because of the war that she started. This is shown in the words, My blackened heart, scorched by flames, a force I can't run from. She has regrets for all the lives that were lost due to her actions, but it's a price that she had to pay in order to reach her goal. And that's just the kind of person that she is. She is willing to go to great lengths to achieve her goals, even if there are serious casualties that follow. These words are also sung in relatively lower notes, which I think is an incredible touch, because it really adds to that overall darker mindset that this phrase gives off. Something that actually is really clever, as well, is the usage of the line, I look to you like a red rose, in the chorus. I was super shocked to figure this out, but a big inspiration for Three Houses was the Chinese poem Wind, Flower, Sun, Moon, which deals with the idea of relationships progressing with the seasons. I'm not going to go too into detail about it, but you should check out Lucky Crit's video on it after this one. I found it super informative. I loved it. Red, as you can see, is the main dominant color of Edelgard's house, even though they're referred to as the Black Eagles. But if you decide to join her and declare war on everybody, the name of the route will be called the Crimson Flower. This also draws attention to the theme of spring, with pink and red being its most dominant colors, while a rose, which is commonly grown in spring, is a very lovely flower to look at and is typically the type of flower that you would buy for a loved one. To conclude, Take a listen to the final verse to the shortened version. Although Edelgard suffers from self-doubt and insecurities, she still has her eye on the bright future that she envisions for Fodlin, and she longs to find an answer to her shortened lifespan due to the experimentation that was done to her in order for her to have multiple crests, which could be considered this cold she knows so well. Edelgard was a victim of blood reconstruction surgery, which allows her to bear two crests, which resulted in her hair turning from a light brown to white. But she also mentions that she had ten other siblings that all had terrible things happen to them, resulting in all of them dying. She lives in this cold reality where she's the only one that could inherit the throne because there was no one else. 
she was the only one who survived everything. She kind of reminds me a lot of Tarato Maruki from Persona 5 Royal, now that I think about it. They both have suffered from irreparable losses, and they both had plans that they believed will be for the betterment of society. But they went about their plans in the most painfully antagonistic ways. Maruki tampered with everybody's minds in order to allow them to live in a reality where everybody is happy. And Edelgard, on the other hand, started an entire war to unify the country to rid Fodland of their crests. It's understandable what they're doing, but they're not as justifiable as they think they are. They worked so hard only to lose everything in the end. Well, as long as you don't side with Edelgard in the Black Eagle route, that is. And with that, we're going to call it a video. I would love to analyze the entire song, but I don't want to risk this video being insanely long. Uh, but I could probably find out so much more and more about this song every time I listen to it. But hopefully you all learned a little bit about music literacy and the methodology of Zoltan Kodai. I gotta admit, it felt kind of weird making this video, because I never really liked Kodai's teaching strategies going through college, but I can definitely see that it's much more effective than I can remember. And it was actually a lot of fun to analyze one of my favorite Fire Emblem songs using his methodologies. I even learned more about the game itself in the process. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe for more. And maybe I'll even consider doing more of these kinds of videos where I analyze other musical pedagogue teachings, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Also, please do not forget, I did actually start streaming on Twitch.tv. However, if you missed a stream or you don't want to go on Twitch, I have a separate channel called The Murphy Nation where I'm uploading all of the streams that I've done. So, even the streams that I did on YouTube, Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem, Dauntless, and Valorant, those are gonna be on there as well, and all of the streams that I've been doing on Twitch. So, so far, it's gonna be The Walking Dead, Dark Souls 1, and my Pokemon Emerald Randomizer Nuzlocke. Now, unfortunately, uh, so something happened, I'm not gonna spoil it, something happened in Emerald. So now, actually, uh, the day after I'm recording this audio, I'm going to be starting my Pokemon Shield Wonderlock, which I am very excited about because I've never done a Wonderlock, and I actually really enjoy Pokemon Shield. Uh, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. So, if you guys are interested in all that, be sure to come on down to my Twitch channel. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9.30pm, although at the time of recording, I've only got one more chapter left to do, and then I uh, will probably do something else. Wednesdays is going to be Dark Souls, and Fridays is going to be my Pokemon Shield Wonderlock. So, I hope you all can come hang out with me for a little bit on those days, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.